<laughs> right. So, 31st of August, 1957, oh. our wonderful Sunday was born. Isn't he a wonderful son, Derek? Yeah. <laughs> right. Say yes, Derek. Say yes, Derek. Sorry. Yes, Derek. Yes, Derek. Yes, Derek. Yes, Derek. We did that in Tenchuk uh, in Somerset. And David and I were both born in Somerset. Anyway, uh, 58 years ago, we moved to Winchester. Our house wasn't quite ready, so Derek had to come before us. And guess what? He had found and joined Sparshaw Cricket Club <laughs> before we had even arrived. <laughs> Derek, Derek it has been coming here for 58 years. Wow. David was presented with his first cricket <clears throat> at the age of two together with all full instructions of how to play the game and to hold it correctly. David was a very lively child. <laughs> and friends said she thought he took after me until she met Derek. And then she knew that David didn't stand a chance. <laughs> lively child though he was, he never did wrong. I told that to a very serious neighbor, and she said to me, well, we didn't tell you at the time, <laughs> but, but he bowled a ball from your porch, and it hit and broke a window in the house opposite. But they were so impressed by him to finish the bowl that far, they never told. <laughs> anyway, David started playing here when he was 11, I think. And then he went to St. Mary's College. And there, Derek and I experienced that wonderful evening, the parents' evening. And do you remember a physics master who said, if ever there should be a boy strolling of course across the courtyard, you could depend upon it to be waters. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling very depressed, Father and I went to see the English master. And he said, this boy loves English. He loves, oh, Dylan Thomas, Welsh. He loves T.S. Eliot. And he said, I can't say it. He said, you had the gift of friendship. And if you look around here, that gift has continued. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. First, a massive thank you to everyone for making it here today. Um, I know how much it means to Dad, and it means just as much to the rest of the family as well. Um, it certainly seems appropriate for us to be gathered here at Sparshall. As Grandma has, has said, it, it's been close to the heart of the family for three generations now. Um, and importantly, also, as you've gathered from Grandma's little speech, um, that it is a cricket ground. Um, and, you know... The, the, no better place for us to be gathered, given um, what it means to Dad. Um, there, were, uh, there was a moment towards the end of last year when we started discussing as a family how best we should, we should celebrate his uh, 60th birthday, where Dad started to get a little bit uh, concerned, I guess, um, that cricket might not play a prominent enough role <laughs> in the festivities. So, so concerned, in fact, that he... He quickly took it upon himself, a unilateral decision, um, to arrange for himself his own 60th <laughs> party, and here we are today. Um, now, my mum, who, like the rest of you, found out about today when she received, the, let's call it, uh, a beautifully created uh, email invitation. Um, she announced at the time, uh, and I quote, He's turning more and more into Mr. B. <laughs> <laughs> Planning his own birthday parties and probably sending himself his own cricket-themed birthday cards. <laughs> um, 
but, but on a serious note, cricket has um, played a massive part um, in Dad's life and given him so much and given us as a family so much as well. I mean, uh, most of you here today are, are here um, because of cricket, so it certainly is very, very special um, to us all. And we're so thrilled that Dad made the decision to go ahead and plan his own birthday party. Um, <laughs> And so pleased that it has brought so many people together from all over the UK, from Kenya, uh, from Holland, and, and probably a few other places as well. So thank you all um, again for coming. Um, and before before I finish, and this is probably the reason I started talking in the first place, I um, would like to add that um, I, and I know I speak for Mum and Mara um, as well, I'm incredibly proud of all Dad has achieved in his 60 years. Um, we've watched him receive an MBE from the Queen, um, we've seen firsthand through his hard work and passion for cricket and, and for helping others the impact he's had on young people um, in Kenya and we have felt um, always the, the love he has for his family and friends and um, you know this is a real testament to that. So thank you Dad and I hope you've had a good day. <laughs> Words, but I am now. I can only say thank you to you all for coming as well. Lives and things that are important to you are all about people rather than places. But I've been unbelievably fortunate in my life that places and people have sort of come together. We've got people here today, Richard Edwards, well, I don't know where Richard is, but he's the same age as me. We both played for this club because we had fathers and mothers, and it's not just fathers, it's mothers too. Richard's mum and my mum used to make the teas at this club when I was this big, and we, the pavilion was over there. Both our fathers were out on the field. Richard's dad, the ground is named after him, the Norman Edwards ground. We both played for the men's team when we were 11, and we're both still playing cricket now, and it was a real privilege to be out there with him again today. There are people that I've I met in Kenya, there were people I met at Nonington, Keith Bell was, is my best mate from Nonington. Um, there are people that, have, that I met at Cranley School. Um, one really sad thing today is that Mike Wilson isn't here. Mike Wilson um, and Ka his wife Carolyn were colleagues of, of mine and Ian Wood, who's, who was my boss and my, my headmaster in the banner in 1981. Earlier on, Keith Geddes was here. He and I got off the same plane in 1981 when we both went out to teach at the Bandler School. Um, it's a shame that, that he's not here now because Rosemary Strawn, Rosemary Wilson, it became Rosemary Wilson, sadly Tim's no longer with us, but Rosemary Keith, Barbara Coyne and I, from 1981 when I first arrived, every holiday we would go off on safari somewhere. Ian was not only my headmaster, he was the best captain I've ever played under, he was the captain of, of Congonies and Nairobi Club. I have only seen Ian once in the last, I don't know, 35 or, or something like that years. There are people that are meeting today for the first time in over 30 years. It's, it, it's basically all about people. There are, I've got friends here that um, I, I met as, as a result of a cricket tour. Graham Johnson came out with the Lord's Tavernus. Thank you for the shirt, Graham. I certainly did <laughs> that after that. Um, and we've now, that was in 1996, and we've been mates ever since then. Um, there's one person here who isn't playing today but scored earlier on, and as it's raining, I can carry on talking a little bit longer than I was going to. Robert Edge. Robert and Sean Ed Edge. Um, I started a little school, um, a, a kindergarten school in Nairobi. Sean Ed was the head teacher there. Um, and Rob used to play, score, umpire, do anything for cricket and for Congonians. <laughs> and there was one famous game, and I think it, it encapsulates everything that is great about cricket. Rob came out of bat at number 11, facing the then England opening bowler, Dean Headley. We were playing for Congonies, we were trying to save the game, and Rob had one full over of Dean Headley, it was on the, there was a touring team out, and he, and he was trying hard to win the game for his side. And Rob threw himself down the wicket, forget trying to hit the ball, just threw his body in the way of the ball, and it gives me tingles, I tell this story often, it gives me tingles up my spine, whenever I tell this story, and he survived the whole over, and we ran on the field and we carried him off. And it's all... Sorry, I missed the four, I missed the four. 
But going back to it, it is all about people and friendships. And there are, th there are several things that bind a lot of us together, and that is Kenya. I mean, Kenya has, has, has played an enormous role um, in my life um, and in the lives of a lot of people here. And it's often said, and there are people that haven't lived in Kenya but have come out to visit us in Kenya that are here as well, that once you come, you either never want to leave or you want to return, and people do return. And looking around the faces that, that, that I can see here, that is certainly true. People who've been out more than once and people who want to come out again. This club, and my father and mother have, have basically given me the love of everything I, I have. They love birds, they love the outdoor life, they love wildlife, they love cricket in nice places like this. This club obviously means an enormous amount to me. Um, and all the people that are involved in it. And one thank you that I, or two or three thank yous, the people that, look, this ground is looking the best now that I've ever seen it. And I think, yeah. I, I don't really know the guy's name's Dave Banks, but he's, an, he's a newish member, in, in, certainly in my history. But he's, he's now playing for the first team, and he's out here giving his time and effort. Clubs need people like Dave Banks, they need people like Richard Edwards, they need people like Richard Mesa, who was here earlier on, people who, who give up their time to look after the kids, run the bar, Tony. Richard's son, Tony Edwards, is now taking on being secretary here. Clubs need people to help them. This club's been very fortunate over the years that we've had those people. And we've, I am extremely grateful that the club has, has allowed me to use the, the ground for this um, occasion. I've got so many friends here, it would be, it would be wrong to sort of pick out people and, and, uh, in particular, but I just can't thank you enough. I know there were other things I was going to say, but I, they're just out of my mind. I would say that the only thing that I'm really missing here is obviously my wife and my daughter. Um, <laughs> Harsita um, and Mara are both in India. So when Harsh realised that I was going to be organising this, and Mara, I, only, I haven't seen her for quite a while, and we, she arrived on one day and I flew out here the next day. Um, and they decided in, in, uh, impromptu to go off to India on a, on a girl's trip to India. And they have had an absolute ball. And I'm only sad that they're not here, but I'm delighted they've had a good time. So I miss them, but I've got you guys, and I can't thank you enough. It's just fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. Um, could we all afterwards, just as soon as we've just done the, the cake, could we all have a group photo outside the pavilion? Now it's not going. Can I just say that there are the, the candles on these cakes are really beautiful. Thank you. 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 Thank but they have been on all our family cakes. We've only got left a wicket keeper, two umpires, <laughs> one field <laughs> And they want that is one for each day. Thank you. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.